Hello, my name is Melissa Landeros and I'm a marketing specialist with the Office of Research. In this presentation, I'm going to share with you a simple marketing communications plan template that we use in consultations with the research units that our office supports. My role within the marketing communications department here is to support our research units with whatever marketing needs they may have. That support looks different for every unit depending on what those needs are and what resources they already have or have access to. Regardless of their size or the project size, however, the creation of an effective product or campaign is expedited by the existence of a marketing communications plan. But expediting individual projects is just one of the many benefits of taking the time and effort to think through what it is you wanna communicate about your research program. Other benefits of creating a marketing communications plan include consistency and credibility. When people consistently hear the same thing about you, it builds credibility, and they are more likely to remember you. When everyone they talk to or every time they encounter you, they learn of something different, they may wonder what it is you actually do or what you do well. Can they trust what they've heard if they always hear something different? Will they remember anything about your program if every time they hear about it, they hear something different? Effective effectiveness of efforts. When all your marketing communications activities reinforce the same points, those points become memorable. When you make a plan, you can ensure that everything you are doing is helping you reach your goals. Less thought goes into what do we want to say in this brochure or this landing page or this presentation or the social media post, and more goes into how do we use the specific opportunity to communicate our established messaging. I'd also like to mention here that the average human attention span is now 8.25 seconds. Thank you, smartphones, which is shorter than that of a goldfish. If you're throwing spaghetti at the wall every time you put something out, talking about your program at too high a level, or not focusing on what people are actually interested in knowing about you, what are the chances you are capturing someone's attention within 8.25 seconds? Buy-in from team and leadership. If key leadership is involved in the development of this plan, you know that if it is stuck to, you have their approval. There is no wondering if this is a goal or if this is what they would want said, the conversation has been had and approved, asked and answered. Autonomy. Hand in hand with the point above, when everyone knows the plan, everyone can act on it with confidence. Leadership does not have to be super involved in every marketing or communications project or opportunity. People at lower levels are empowered to create content on behalf of the program because they already know what should be included. Efficiency of time. When less thought goes into what should be said and the question is simply, how do we say what we need to say in this specific format? Time is saved and the little time you do spend becomes more effective and therefore is used more efficiently. Knowing how crucial a plan like this can be to the success of a program, Office of Research Leadership wanted each of our impact centers to have one when they launched back in 2019. Faced with the task of creating four plans at one time, we came up with the template I'm going to take you through today. And it proved to be such a useful tool that we have taken many units, labs, and programs through the same process in the years since. The template is available in both a PDF format and editable Word format on our website. It may be helpful for you to download it and look at it while going through the rest of this presentation, but it is not required. The simple and effective template touches on, a key, touches on the key components of a marketing strategy. While you can, and perhaps should, dig much deeper into each of these things at some point, the outline format of this template makes it easy to create, refer back to, and adjust regularly as needed. So let's get started with what I'm calling here the foundational elements. These things likely already exist as a product of past strategic planning, and starting with them will help you concentrate your efforts on what matters most. I always put the program's mission or objective at the top, then read through the goals listed in the strategic plan, looking for things that marketing communications can help achieve. Things like funding, like increased funding, awareness, or impact on public policy. Starting here helps us communicate with a purpose. 
Knowing why we are communicating will shape the things we are saying. Now, if you don't have a strategic plan in place, that is fine. This part may just take you a little longer. Take the time to really think through what you are trying to accomplish by getting the word out. What goals do you have that greater awareness of what you are doing can help you achieve? As a sidebar here, this template can also be used for smaller initiatives or campaigns within a larger marketing strategy. Simply list the objective of that initiative and make the goals more specific. <clears throat> Next, we want to think about the competitive landscape. I get some funny faces and a little pushback here sometimes, as many don't like to apply business terms to research. But think of this more as who is doing what in your space? And how are you uniquely addressing a need? We want to know who is competing for the same resources we are, whether it's funding, personnel, attention, notoriety, or research breakthroughs. And competition does not have to be a negative thing. Runners run faster when they're competing against faster runners. You will do better when you are aware of what others are doing in your space. Brainstorm who those programs, centers, institutes, organizations are. Consider how and where they talk about themselves. Look at their websites, their social media, their newsletters, their print collateral, whatever you have access to. Are they doing anything that you like and would consider mimicking? Are they doing anything you definitely want to stay away from? Are there any holes or unmet needs? in the space that could be your place to shine? With all these competitors in mind, consider how your program is uniquely addressing a need. Are you doing anything others are not? Or are you doing anything in a way that no one else is? Maybe you are the only one in the area, state, region, or country that is doing something specific. If you don't have anything here, consider the unmet needs you may have found in looking at the whole landscape. Are there any you can fill? Can you pivot slightly to fill a hole in the market? List out the strengths of your program. They don't have to be unique here, just what you are really good at. Are there resources you have access to, especially being connected to UC Davis that strengthens your research program? As a side note, sometimes when it's hard to come up with how a program is uniquely addressing a need, starting with the list of strengths then pulling out what is unique can be helpful. As you go through this competitive landscape, don't forget other programs, labs, centers, institutes, groups, and initiatives at UC Davis. Complete awareness of these can help you differentiate what you are doing from other entities on campus and also serve as a foundation for collaboration and synergy down the line. <clears throat> now that you have all that down, I want you to think about your target audience or audiences. Based on the goals you established earlier, who is it that you need to reach? Who needs to know about you and what you are doing? Are they on campus, off campus, or both? Some examples include students, faculty, staff, potential partners, funding agencies, policymakers, segments of the general population, etc. You want a comprehensive list here, but remember that quality is better than quantity. With limited resources, you want to concentrate on the people who will truly help you reach your established goals. As you make this list, you also want to define what is important to each audience. What will resonate with them? It might be different for each one. Consider these audiences specifically in all communications and marketing decisions. What is the information they need to know to make the decision you want them to make? What do they want to know? Where do they get their information? What events do they go to? What publications do they read? What podcasts might they listen to? What social platforms are they on? Now, considering how they behave, think about how you will reach them. Be where they are or where they're looking. Speak their language and make sure to convey your value. Getting more specific, what should you be doing on the web? How are you pushing out content and what kind of content are you creating? Do you pay for advertising? What kind of marketing collateral do you create and what does it highlight? What events do you make sure you attend or table at? Are there events you should be putting on to reach a specific audience? Should you attempt to engage with the media 
And if so, what outlets? Once you have figured out who you are talking to and how you plan to reach them, you wanna give some thought to what you wanna say. By determining how you will talk about yourself and communicating that to the people who talk about you, namely the people who work with you, you keep those messages consistent and build the credibility we talked about at the beginning of this presentation. This messaging developed using the information you fleshed out in the competitive landscape and target audiences section should come through in every medium used to talk about you. Your website, the content you post on social media, brochures, slide decks, press releases, ad campaigns, descriptions you provide to partners, presentations of your research, and so on and so forth. Creating established messaging will help you ensure that you focus on your unique strengths and the things your audience cares about when communicating about your program. Our team likes to use a tool called the Message Box, which was developed by Compass, Commu Compass Science Communications. The tool, which is pictured and linked here, was created to help you explain to your audience what you do and why it matters. There are other message development tools out there as well, but whatever you use, you want to make sure the why us comes through. Why is your program, center, lab, the right group to be doing what you are doing, to be doing what your audience is looking for? In the message box tool, I try to bring that through in every piece, but especially in the solution section. How is the research you are doing the answer or part of the answer? We recommend developing a main overarching message for the purpose of this outline and general communications, but also working through specific messaging for your individual audiences, keeping in mind the specific things they care about and want to know about you. All the more specific messaging should relate back to the overarching message though. They will obviously be different, but should feel like they are part of the same family. When you have nailed down your messaging and know who you want to reach with it, Think about who can help you get the word out. Does the college or department of anyone associated with you have resources? Are there offices on campus, like the Office of Research, who can help you? Are there synergistic groups that you can join or help create that can boost awareness of what you are doing? Are there similar research organizations on or off campus that you can partner with? A great example of synergy and partnership is the UC Davis Neuroscience Consortium. Recognizing that UC Davis has one of the largest neuroscience communities in the world, the faculty, departments, centers, and institutes doing neuroscience research have come together to put it all in one place, so to speak. The website they have created, which you can find at ucdnc.ucdavis.edu, works to help the user understand the size and nuances of this research area at UC Davis, reducing confusion about who does what and shining a light on programs and potential partnerships that may otherwise get lost in the vastness of activity. Now, one of the reasons I know about this website is they reached out to our office for help when creating the consortium. In fact, they reached out to a lot of departments, colleges, and offices for help, which brings me to my final point, Know the resources that are available to you and use them. Our office specifically supports interdisciplinary research at UC Davis with a primary focus on those that report up through us. Our marketing and communications team is relatively small, but there may be a way we can help support what you are trying to do or point you in the right direction if you are unsure of where to get support. Your school, college, and or department likely has a communications team. Reach out to see if there is anything they can do to support you in your communications efforts. The campus has a few resources that can help make things easier. Strategic Communications has compiled the Campus Brand Communications Guide, which you can easily find at brand.ucdavis.edu. On this website, you can find UC Davis's branding elements, like colors, fonts, logos, and logo guidelines, a list of approved vendors for things like design, writing, photography, and videography, tools and resources like downloads and enterprise tools, and best practices for social media, websites, photo use, and more. Sticking to the established brand guidelines set forth by the campus helps associate you with the campus, 
Looking and feeling like UC Davis lends you the established credibility of being part of the university. Lastly, I've listed Site Farm, which is a platform for creating UC Davis websites. The team at Site Farm has worked hard to make the platform user-friendly and the websites easy to launch. Using this platform also ensures your website utilizes UC Davis branding and the design stays updated. I appreciate the time you have taken to join me today and encourage you to invest time and effort into creating marketing communications plan for your research program. I hope the simplicity of this template helps make that undertaking a little easier and help start conversations within your program about your strengths, what makes you unique, who needs to know about you, and how you can communicate those things to them. My contact information is listed here. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about the things I have said here or need help getting connected to resources available to you. If you are a research unit supported by the Office of Research and would like help walking through this process or with any other marketing project, please get in touch with me. I'm here to help you. Thank you.